everyone, I'm Ovi. Welcome to What's Up Chinese Medicine. I'm very excited and have been preparing this video for a while because this is the first video that I cooperated with Da Yi Jingcheng. Da Yi Jingcheng is a fan page that is founded by a group of students in Chinese Medical University who pays efforts to introduce Chinese medicine to everyone. In order to let people around the globe get to know this old and mysterious Eastern medicine, this video will be filmed in English. And I will try my best to explain Chinese medicine in various perspectives to all of you. Let's get started! First thing first, you must be curious about the origin of Chinese medicine. Basically, we can conclude the origin of Chinese medicine to three possibilities. First one is from the myth of the saint, such as Fu Xi Shi, Sheng Nong Shi, and Huang Di. Please be noted that the name of Sheng Nong Shi, Fu Xi Shi, and Huang Di are not the name of three people, but three tribes. According to the legends, they will taste and record the functions of wild herbs and explain how the human body works. Nowadays, we can find the experiences and theories of them in Chinese Medicine Bible, Huang Di Nei Jing and Shen Nong Ben Cao Jing. The second origin of Chinese medicine is from witchcraft. People usually seek wizard or witch's help when they have tricky diseases in ancient times. So the witch or wizard at that time is both clergy, doctor, and pharmacist. Interestingly, the original Chinese character of the word doctor also has the meaning of witchcraft. However, today's Chinese medicine has constructed a systemical theory by many generations' efforts and is different from witchcraft. The third origin is through observation of the nature, like how animals act and how plants grow. For example, the famous Chinese medical doctor Hua Tuo once observed that an otter felt uncomfortable after swallowing a big fish, and then he discovered that it picked up a certain herb to alleviate its discomfort. After constant observation and experience, people conclude the causes of diseases and the characteristic of the medicine to form a theoretical structure, thus becomes today's Chinese medicine. After having a brief knowledge of the origin of Chinese medicine, let's talk about the differences between Chinese medicine and the modern medicine. The first difference is the standpoint toward diseases. Modern medicine tends to examine human body microscopically and divide it into many small components. While Chinese medicine sees human body as a whole entity and values balance very much. In other words, sickness results from the imbalance of our body. When it comes to illness, what comes up in your mind? Yes, medication! The distinct target of treatment is the second differences between Chinese and modern medicine. Modern medication features on killing pathogens and alleviating acute symptoms, whereas Chinese medicine pays more attention to help our bodies activate immune and recovery systems. Once our bodies can restore their balance, we can recover from the disease. Besides medication, Acupuncture and moxibustion are also useful methods of Chinese medicine. The coping therapy that Michael Phelps used in Olympic Games is also a kind of Chinese medical treatment. Finally, compared to modern medication, there is a small chance for Chinese medicine to have side effects. After all, Chinese medication is still a kind of medicine. Although it doesn't have that much side effect as modern medication, taking medicine itself is a burden to our health. So you should stop taking any medicine when you're healed. Last but not least, let's talk about how Chinese medical doctors deal with disease. I believe some of you have already been familiar with look, smell and hear, ask, and touch. 
These are four main approaches, aka unbreakable four in Chinese medicine. First, look diagnosis. What exactly are Chinese medical doctors looking at? This is the primary observation of the patients when he or she first steps into the clinics, including tongue, consciousness, complexions, and how the patients talk and walk, etc. These are all very important in the look diagnosis. You can say Chinese medical doctor is like Sherlock Holmes, only the latter is trying to find out who's the murderer, while the former is trying to find out the cause of the disease. Secondly, smell and hear diagnosis. Wen actually means smell and hear in Mandarin. Therefore, this diagnosis method include these two parts. Chinese medical doctor will access patients' health conditions through hearing their speaking tone, volume, breathing situations, and smelling whether the patient have special odors. The third part is ask diagnosis. This is rather the important one of all four, and is similar to the history taking in modern medicine. In this part, patient will tell his or her chief complaint, and Chinese medicine doctor will also ask some questions for better diagnosis. Finally, is the touch diagnosis. This is probably the main reason why people think Chinese medicine is mysterious. Because in this part, Chinese medical doctor will diagnose disease by touching patients' pauses of both hands and their stomachs. These four ways of diagnosis each has their own purposes. The four of them interact, complete, but cannot replace each other. They are equally important in clinical diagnosis, and they also allow Chinese medical doctor to understand the full view of the disease. Okay, after introducing the origin of Chinese medicine, the differences compared to modern medicine, and how does Chinese medicine approaches a disease, I hope that this video gives you more knowledge of the mysterious Eastern medicine. Of course, there is so much more than that for Chinese medicine. If you want to find out more, you're very welcome to subscribe my channel. Or check out the What's Up Chinese Medicine video I've published before. Also, feel free to leave your comment. Don't forget to follow my Instagram and like this video. Most important of all, share this video to your friends all over the world. See you next time!